the brother when you saw the brother uh, uh, talking to the commissioner the commissioner to the boss earlier on and I think that's the last one has his ID now around his, uh, around his neck and uh, we are ready to go. And that buzzer is music to the ears of the uh, 23,000 people here at the Araneta Coliseum. The venue of such greats like the Thrilla in Manila, just one of the many historic sporting events that have happened. I mean, last year, as we mentioned, Mark, yeah, last year, the most dramatic probably season of the UAP. And we're not only talking about the Ateneo, Ateneo Lasan Classics, we're talking about the season as a whole. This year, we're only into the second day. And, and boy, it's already Ateneo Lasan. And it, oh boy, what the, the things that have transpired already. You know, but what also made that loss to Lasal uh, hurt more for the day was the fact that Lasal went on to beat UP the champ uh, uh, yes. and, and, and win the championship. The champ At that point, when they were playing for, second, uh, for the second final slot, both uh, UE was an overwhelming favorite, but by Lasal beating UE, yeah. then Ateneo will think, what if it was us, and maybe we could have beaten UE also. And remember, Ateneo was the only team that was not blown out yes. by UE last year, but that's all a foregone conclusion, ladies and gentlemen. Brand spanking New Year. The defending champions are looking to defend their crown, and Ateneo is looking to finally get over the hump and get into the championship picture. Once again, Chris Chu on his last year starting for the Ateneo Blue Eagles and that rookie on your screens earlier, Ryan Buenafe. It will be Kurt Long also joining them. And they will make the backcourt on the Ateneo Blue Eagles, the pretenders to the crown for the Ateneo Blue Eagles and the Delasaw Green Archers will have Castro and Simon Atkins with Malas and PJ Wal Walsham. And let's give you our Starting five to start your appetite for the game. Here's your Appetit starting five. Appetit to increase body weight. And look at the size here of Ateneo at guard. You have Kirk Long and Chris Chu. Yes. And then Buenafe, Alusene, and Baldos. All of those guys around 6'3 and above. And uh, Lasal, of course. Nasho is there. Atkins, Walsham, Villanueva, and Mangas. The guy who's not there, Rico Meyerhofer, who usually comes off the bench here for Coach Franz Tomale. And just to mention, Mark, the... Um, in the Nike Summer League, not too long ago, four, a month ago, Ateneo beat La Salle in the semifinals and then beat UE. So they're, correct. they're coming in really confident. They, they have a different swagger about themselves and they know, and they hear the talk about them being a strong team this year and probably right. the tallest team in season 71. From top to bottom, you, 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 can, you can say that. And what if you, if you have not been watching Ateneo during the preseason, as we, I think there's an early technical foul called here. Or is that, is this? Because Chris Chu. The start the game, two technical free throws for Chris Chu. So a technical is... foul called on the bench. Oh, so that ID rule was actually a technical, a technical foul on the bench. So that's that, and when it's a bench technical, it's two free throws. It's correct? two free throws. I, this is the first time I've seen this happen before before the game starts. Me too. So two free throws, and then we will have a jump ball. So that's the ID that they were talking about. So that's a new rule, one of the new rules. Coach Franz Pomare, obviously disgusted so with the turn of events at the start, Bang. even before the jump ball. May plus two ang Ateneo in this game. <laughs> <laughs> we are underway for part one of Ateneo versus Lasal. Boom Gonzalez, Mark Molina with you for ABS-CBN Sports. An early turnover by Lasal. And a traveling infraction by... I'm sorry, early turnover by Ateneo and a traveling infraction by Lasal. So they are one and one. Keep in mind that turnover of Ateneo. At, of, of Ateneo. Ateneo right now will play Kurt Long at the point guard position. And this is something that can be troublesome here for Ateneo because of the way Lasalle, because of Lasalle's pressure. They have been using the starting lineup since the Nike Super League mark. And obviously going up against Lasalle, they know that the press is coming. So obviously they prepare for that with Chris Chu and Kurt Long. And what about the rookie from San Sebastian? Ryan Buenafe for his first two points as an Ateneo Blue Eagle. And he draws a charge from Maui Villanueva. You know, Norman Black, 
the coaching philosophy, coaching style of Norman Black. He usually brings in his rookies slowly. Yes. I mean, last year, Kirk Long didn't play until the third or fourth game of the season. But this year, starting in the very first game, is Ryan Buenafé. This It says a lot about the readiness of this guy to play in college already. Let's talk about the coaching staff since they uh, were uh, given a technical uh, talking about LaSalle. Sharon, you has more on the coaching staff of the LSU. Sharon, go ahead. That is right, Boo. Tons of new things about the Green Archers this year. Let's start with the bench. Six rookies and former co-captain Cholo Villanueva elevated as the assistant coach for De La Salle. And coach Tunichi Turi uh, taking the place of big man coach Joey Santa Maria. And for those who still don't know, his call and OJ Gluon decided to focus on graduating on time, thus supporting the team on the sidelines. And now a lot of people are asking, what about Coach Francis' role in the RP youth team and possible conflicting schedules? Well, maximum of two games this July, Coach Jack will be taking over. And when I asked him about it, he said, and so naman ang sistema ni Coach Franz and matagal na kaming magkasama. So pretty much, alam ko na po ano ang gusto niya mangyari. For today, Coach had to remind them that there is no such thing as a perfect game, a perfect defense, but let's hustle, communicate, be aggressive without fouling, and we will recover. Good job there, Boone. Thank you very much, Sharon. You reporting on what the upgrade is on the coaching staff of the LSU. We'll talk about that in a while. In the meantime, Ryan Buenafé and then Raba al Husseini, who has developed that jump hook, and if he has mastered that, Mark, it's going to be very tough to stop. And you have to like this if you're at the Early in the game, they're going inside to Buenafé and to uh, al Husseini. So Chris Chu playing a decoy role here in the beginning of the ball game, and, and that's, that's great for Coach Norman Black. Ryan Buenafé with nine on the 24. Baldos traveled in that sequence again the breakout game for Michael Baldos in that playoff against the USD last year since then he has been given playing time by coach Norman Black as we check out our smart instant replay brought to you by smart don't tell me this is not Tim Duncan like <laughs> very, Look at very that. nice very nice and that's dangerous. If he masters that, there is nobody in the league who will be able to reach that shot. Because of the size that he has and also the, the bulk uh, of this guy, Rafa al And his wingspan, too. Yes, that's right. So you might be wondering why Baldos is starting in place of uh, Noni Baclau, the usual starter. I believe George Norman Black is digging him off the bench to match up with Rico Mayer Hoffman yes, when yes. he enters later on. Excellent observation, Mark. Two turnovers for both teams right now as J.B. Castro coming off an injury. A lot has been said about that injury of J.B. Castro. There was speculation that he was even going to go uh, undergo operation. And I was talking to Cholo Villanueva. They were all scared with all of those rumors going around. But J.B. starting off with a three-point shot right away. Not on this final year, J.B. Castro will be top here in season 71. J.B. Castro setting up on the Goes to the other side. Loses control of the speed run. Seven in the first quarter. Six to three in the score and Kurt Long, captain of the ship right now. Seven minutes. Chris Chu thought about it. Then pulls up. Rattles that one out. And Villanueva could not contain the rebound at the 655 mark. Let's usher in the fourth member of our broadcast team and welcome the new courtside reporter for Ateneo, Kame De Jesus. Kame? The entire Ateneo community is one with the Blue Eagles as it faces our rivals, the Dallas Austin Archers. The victory in the Nike Summer League is now water under the bridge for the Blue Eagles as they face this season and as they look at championships. Yes, boom, we are welcoming season 71 with five towering rookies led by Ryan Buenafe, who is an MVP from the San Sebastian Staglitz. Team Ateneo is bigger and bolder with its leading scoremen, Jai Reyes, Kirk Long, Eric Slamat, and Chris Chu. And as coach Norman Black said right before this game, today there is no other option but to win. Boom. Thank you very much, Kame De Jesus, and welcome to the UAAP team. Chris Chu puts it in for three. Excellent play here by coach Norman Black. He puts Kirk Long in the low post against J.P. Castro, attracting the double team, leaving Chris Chu open for that shot. J.V. against Kirk. J.V. finds Malas. The adjustment in midair. The tap going back to Malas. They reset the table. 6-10 remaining. Oh, what a find by J.V. Castro. An incredible look by the senior from De La Salle. 
And there's six minutes remaining. Ryan Buenafe, a converted point guard right now. They swing it over to Chris. Chris decides to pass off. That's an offensive foul on Mike Malos. But we saw in that sequence how versatile a player this guy Ryan Buenafe is. He rebounds, he can pass, he can bring the ball up, up the floor also for the play he loses. First time out of the ballgame brought to us by Samsung. Imagination lives. It is 9 to 5, courtesy of Ateneo de Manila. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Araneta Coliseum. Ateneo leads 9 to 5 in the early going of the first quarter. Six offensive rebounds already for Ateneo. DLS Steel only with one. And that will be a stat that we'll be looking at time and again. The mark going into. Uh, the deep stretch, uh, stretches of this ball game. Also the turnovers. As we look at our Accenture three-point shot, high performance delivered, Chris Chu. A lot of speculation after last year that he was not going to come back to play again. Because he already graduated yes. from, the, from the Ateneo. He took another course, yes. and he, I talked to him, and he said really the motivation for coming back other than just studying is really to try to get the crown because he, he felt like that team last year was very close and he feels like they have a better team this year and he's very confident about their chances this year. That's true. He's made the final four all of his uh, playing years here in the UAP. He even made the finals uh, in 2006 but no championships yet for Chris Chu. Joe Takamakola has lost so much weight, Mark. Looks like in better condition than uh, a couple of years that he played. Chris Chu lines it up for another three. That's not, it's not there. Kurt Long trying to get the offensive rebound. It will go to LaSalle, but great effort that by was, the second-year player. That was something Ateneo did not have from the small forward position last year. Somebody like Buenafue, who can create the way he did that last time, attracted the defense, and then nice kick out pass to Chris Chu. Joe Nekamakola, Brian Buenafe, and Raba Aluseni. The lefty Maui Villanueva strokes it in. Rookie against rookie. And there's a call here. There's a foul. And the basket will count, and it is on an Ateneo. And if there is a, a weakness here on Buenafe, it might be his defense. And we have Villanueva taking advantage of it that time. I, I like that point because Mark Brian Buenafe a highly touted rookie coming into this uh, season, obviously starting as a rookie, right. but the he's well documented in terms of his offense. As we look at an Alexan fast release, must the body pain, Kalabagad, and Alexan FR. He's not really, um, you know, there's not much that has been said about his defense, his previous offense, and his size and bump that everybody's been talking about as PJ Walsh misses this one. We are not in a nine. 4.30 to play. You will see a lot of this uh, for LaSalle. Maybe even close games. You will see J.V. Casio playing the point guard position. Now that T.Y. Tang is not here anymore, Eric Salamat, by the way, comes in. And Eric Salamat's also going to be key this year for Ateneo with the simple reason that he will be, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, he seems to be the only player who can slash into that uh, basket right now for Ateneo. That's right. Oh, well, Buenafe can do that Off also. A guard uh, position. Uh, from the guard position, that, that, you're absolutely right, because Chris Chu and, uh, and even Jai Reyes are more known for their outside shooting, and this guy can create off the dribble Eric Salama. And he will fit into the six-man role here Perfect. for the Ateneo Bills to provide that uh, scoring punch off the bench. Ateneo with 14 on their shot clock, and that's what I was talking about, but that time he traveled on the sneak attack. And you can see, you can see the way LaSalle is defending. Earlier, Buenafe, they made him go to his left, which is not his strong side. This time against Salamat, they made him go to his right. And so we look at Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao, earlier, actually here with us today, as Fidel Malavis is clipped. By Eric Salamat, LaSalle, by the way, is on a 6-0 run in the last 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Rico Meyerhofer is set to come in. And Nando Baklao, by the way, is already in the ball game. Rico, very confident, strut going into this game. She just love college basketball. There's so much to to college basketball than just the game itself. Fidel Malavis 
who didn't play in uh, the Nike Summer League. Apparently, I think it was just flu. Nothing serious. But this guy had uh, had some good games oh, as yeah. a rookie last season, especially with his outside sniping. Two guys who are going to be very important for De La Salle this season. Coming off the bench is Malabes and uh, Barua, as we look at the uh, Mr. Mr. Henry C. But then this is both free throws. Joe Nicomacolam back in Team A for Ateneo. It's a good sign for him. Obviously, his conditioning was the problem back in the day when he was playing for Ateneo. Kurt Long out to Salamat for three. That's short. Kurt Long with the offensive rebound. Chris Chu up against the rookie, Maui Villanueva. Chris Chu trying to look for space. Taken away by Malabes. That is Ateneo ball still with 15. 24. JV Kasha will move out. LA de Villa, now the rookie from San Beda and High School, although he, he also played for the De La Salle, uh, De La Salle Green Hills team. Let's see if they try to take advantage of this uh, mismatch in size with De Villa playing against Kurt Ball. A native of Bacolod also, you can see LA de Villa. 324 left. JC Ital on your screens. He experienced the final year 2006. He was the 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 Two great post moves here. One from Nico Makolo earlier from Alusaini of the Ateneo Big Man. And the undergoal slash also of Ryan Buenafe. Ateneo in the lead by two. And Emilia against Kurt Long. And then Malavis against Salamat. Goes to his right. Spirals through. And is called for a charge. Offensive foul, yes. Against Malavis. Offensive foul number eight. But then Malavis is first. Uh, 2.51 remaining. And we have a Samsung uh, timeout. Imagination lives. We'll be back with more of Ateneo Lasalle Part 1. Welcome back to the Araneta Coliseum. T.Y. Tang on the screens. Joining us here at the Big Dome as we see the adjustment by Joe Nicka McCollum. And the there, power move brought to you by PS Bank, PS Bank, Mahasan. Turnover, number six for Ateneo. It's a stat that we're going to be looking at, especially for the Blue Eagles, as L.A. Revilla announces his entry in the UAB Seniors via the three ball. Not known for his outside shooting, and that's, uh, that one. that's why this shoe did not even challenge that shot, but the rookie making a big shot. And the rookies proving themselves. And now we're going to have Yes. Ryan <laughs> went up in now, and they will be So all the hype and the talk about the Atene rookies, the Lasalle exactly. rookies are coming to play. And in a game as pressure back as this, as Chris Chu draws the foul. You know, three years ago, two years ago, you wouldn't see Chris Chu make moves like that. The really has developed. He's not the most athletic player out there, obviously, but he's smart. And not smart enough to cover L.A. Revilla for this uncensored three-point shot. High performance delivered. I'm sure Chris Chu will make his adjustment now that they know that the guy can stroke it from there. Well, what are the part of Chris Chu? You need a good player improves every year. They add a different facet to his, to, to his game. Chris Chu early in his career was a, a pure outside shooter because Atlanta had guys like Chris Moran and Jason. Yeah. But now he needs he needs also to create eight points for his other teammates because he is the main offensive weapon of Atinella. He is three out of three from the line. Talking about Chris Chu, formerly from Savior School. High school. The crowd trying to get the offensive rebound, and it will be. Ateneo ball, let's see, are they going to correct the ball? Yes, they will go. The ball will go to LaSalle. Ford Ara on the screens. As LaSalle will get possession here, that matchup between Baclau and Meyerhofer is something we're going to look out for. And also, the improvement of Baclau this year. He was already having a breakout season last year. 
that, that's correct. We, we'll see if he has developed his offensive game because we know what he can do on the defensive end of things and also in the rebounding aspect. But the offense not yet uh, developed product uh, on the Unproductive thrust for the south side from 15. That's short. DJ Walsham gets it over to Elliot Avila. Wildly going into the play and was bailed out by a foul by Jai Reyes. He had nowhere to go in that sequence, Mark. He got bailed out there. But he loves to do that. On transition plays, this guy will attack you, L.A. Vivilla, even though he's a small guy. P.J. Walsh with a power raid, power rebound, power raid sports is what you make it. And now, Ferdinand and a much improved and 100% healthy P.J. Barua for De La Salle University now in the ballgame, facing Maui Villanueva and P.J. Walsh. It is Revilla, a rookie, missing his first free throw. Doug Kramer on your screens. Also uh, experiencing a uh, final stint with Maki Escalona and T.C. Tyler. Remember, they were the three captains of that team. Oh, nice split by Eric Salama drawing the foul. Is shooting four out of 11 from the field. LaSalle so far five out of 11. As we see uh, Manabes here committing his second personal foul. You see what they call the JC and foul looking like. Ito Salva, the rookie. Donaldo watching the game also. Well, he knows how it is to hold a championship trophy for De La Salle. Former UAP MVP also, if I'm not mistaken, twice in the 90s. This is Eric Salama in his third year. Yes. Of course, Alamat, also from San Sebastian. Baco Austria from the Ateneo High School program, already in his second year, and recovering from the knee injury that he suffered last year. Coach Norman Black trying to win this opening game. Here with the UAAP. Again, if you can tell your friends and family, those who can't watch, Live broadcast right now in Studio 23. There are the replays on Channel 33 Sky Cable. PJ Barua, running jumper. And in frustration, fouls back on Austria. That was sent back onto the free throw line with LaSalle already over the limit. And speaking of free throws, Ateneo is five out of six from the line. So now Ateneo is six out of seven. A minute and ten remaining in this first quarter by Hopper all the way. A quick reply by the defending champions. And I love what LA De Villa is doing in his very first game here in the UAP. We need them instantly back here for the rookie. Great vision in spotting Ricky Mark Hopper in that past game. What I noticed so far, the rookies of both teams, as we look at this, the front fast break, the front extra let it extra mile play. Rico Meyer Hopper with the extension for the finish right there. He's got the ball right now again. He seems to be challenged with the fact that he knows Donny Baclau yes. is in front of him. Let me just go back to that point about the rookies coming into this game. It seems that they are not showing any kind of nerves. Ryan Buenafe came in. You see it in his face. Maui Villanueva. The same. And L.A. Revilla. And then L.A. Revilla. All up to the challenge. Right? And again, very hard to play in front of 20,000 people in your first game. At, and at the point guard position. Because these guys yeah, yeah. need to exhibit leadership immediately because they play that position. Zero out of five. Rico Meyerhofer and the rest of the De La Salle Green Archers from the free throw line. They've under a minute to play here in the first quarter. 23,000 people in attendance on a Sunday showdown for the main event. Ateneo versus La Salle. Paco Nostia against P.J. Barua. Paclao against Ferdinand. Long against the Tainan Bagatsing, who just entered the ballgame. Salva is blocked by Ferdinand. That was, oh, a, that's that a, was a tentative play there by, exactly. by Salva. He looked like there a shot with no conviction, you know. A C2 cool and clean block, cool plus clean. And a rude welcome to the rookie Nico Salva. 
four on the 24. Bogland pulls up off the glass just in the nick of time. And Coach Leo Austria will like that. And, and he said, I called it. <laughs> <laughs> I called the shot. What are you talking about? Last shot time here for, for La Salle. My offer will take uh, Baklao here. And Dona wants him to go to the left. That's a great move by Baklao, forcing my offer to go to his left. Scramble for the loose ball, and a foul is called on Nico Salva. Let me uh, check if it's on Jai Reyes. It is on Jai Reyes. I stand corrected. That's his second number person. two foul on the Jai Reyes. Coach Norman Black will make a change here. And they have struggled from the free throw line. Sataneo leads only by one now with that conversion from Ferdinand. Jamie Casho, James Mangahas starting for De La Salle earlier in this game. Ferdinand uh, from uh, Indonesia. Indonesia. Right? That's all he needs. That's really, that's the name right there for those who are wondering. Ball will go to Ateneo with 1.4 seconds remaining. Happy to have you with us here on Studio 23. ABS-CBN Sports live and exclusive coverage of the 71st season of your UAAP opening weekend, folks. Kurt Long, Salva with a second and a heave. Oh, good line made it. for Nico Salva. And that will do it for the first quarter. Back here at the Anandetta Coliseum for the second quarter. Underway now with Ateneo leading 18 to 16, courtesy of that free throw by Nico Salva, the rookie from San Beda. Yes, you're watching the LSU, ADMU, live on Studio 23. Boom Gonzalez, Mark Molina, Sharon Yu, and Kame De Jesus on court. And doing the game for you on the Sunday showdown. The two-point lead. And in all the five battles. Oh, what a play. Oh, what a block. What an offensive sequence. But what a de defensive denial by Ateneo. That was a great pass again from Rivilla, but uh, and it looked like Baclau. a plan. It looked yes. like a play. And but Nonay Baklao showing us what he can oh. do on the defensive end against Rico Meyerhofer. No that. less a C2 cool and clean block, cool plus clean. Two blocks for both teams right now. It's third. It's the third of Baklao trying to get into the space of Ferdinand. Second personal foul on him. Thirteen rebounds for. Atene in the first quarter as we look at our Tokyo Tokyo rookie watch, Tokyo Tokyo Meba Gurito. That's Ryan Buenafe, a much talked about rookie from San Sebastian. 13 rebounds for Ateneo, 7 for La Salle, but 7 turnovers for Ateneo and 4 for La Salle in the first quarter. Salva with a shift. Didn't that look like JC Intal on the drive? Well, shifting. Not, not the same athleticism though. Uh, JC Intal uh, definitely could jump higher, much quicker than Salva. But the motion was yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. Ayra Pagacic gets it to the teeth of the defense, makes the adjustment, and kisses it off the glass. This is another guy who has played well oh, yeah. during the preseason yes. for, for the Green Archers. A converted point guard now is Ryan Buenafe for Ateneo. Fourth deadlock of the ball game at 18 all, 20 to play in the second and an offensive foul called Nico Salva. Oh, you can see here Coach Norman Black giving Salva and Buenafe the, the minutes here uh, in the first game uh, of the season because he knows that these two guys are talented enough to make a contribution for another championship run. Great escape by Revilla, just could not finish. Kirk Long gets the retriever, pushing it. Bachman Austria halts and waits for more backup. Ryan Buenafe. Nice fake. The drive. Nothing there, but only Bacal with an offensive rebound and a putback. His first rebound of the ballgame and his first two points, too. 
that's what he does best, uh, not in McLeod. Lurking around that shaded area for uh, offensive rebounds. Third long on BJ Barua, 10 on 24. They leave Revilla. Revilla again, driving, dishing, Meyerhofer for three. That's long. Bajo's all alone for the rebound. This is a very fall at the day of team. As Kurt Long draws the foul as he was going for the rack. Huge on the day of team on the floor right there. Kurt Long and Osley. <laughs> Backward of Kurt Kwong and Oste, and then Buena Fe, Baclau, and Salva. Is that blood on the forehead of Hiram Bagatsi? Looks like it as we look at our Smart It's the Play brought to you by Smart. Put back by Lonely Baclau. Nine turnovers though for Ateneo, only four for LaSalle. We're keeping a count on that one because that can spell the difference in the stretch. I was making a point, Mark, about last year, the five matchups. Four of those games were only won by three points or less. That's right. That, we, all of those games, actually, all five Wait, of those tight. games could have won either way. And two of them were won by a Chris Chu jumper, yes, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. 7.28 remaining. The lead is four now. The biggest lead of Ateneo was at six earlier. Malas against Salva. Malas with a nice Spinderella move. And he puts it in. And that's an important play here for LaSalle because they need another guy who they can go to in the offensive end besides Meyer Hopper and, and uh, J.D. Castro. McLeod at the elbow, thought about it, and then puts it up, rattles out. J.V. going to his left, finishing with his right. And Rico Meyerhofer was there to put it back, but he comes down on his left ankle and rolls it. But he seems okay. He seems okay. He's going to cut it out. Remember last year? Yes. He played on a bum ankle. Was that against UE in the finals? Yes, I think, but I think he's played it against, uh, against Ateneo. Ateneo. All right, speaking of Ateneo, let's throw it back to Kamei de Jesus for the Ateneo Blue Eagles. Yes, Blue, this quarter we will be seeing more ball movements from the Ateneo Blue Eagles as Coach Norm Black reminded his boys to have more team plays rather than individual impact gaming. He also reminded the team to be more visible to each other and to stick to their game plan. At this point, commu communication isn't the only thing that is asked from the players in the court, but also communication between the players and the coaches and the benches. Back to you, Boone. Which is always hard. Thank you, Kabe. Which is always hard because of the crowd yes. drowning out a lot of the instructions. That's why the players uh, rely on a lot of hand signals uh, from their coaches. Chris Chu getting it back. He loves that shot, and that's why. He loves that pick and pop shot around the elbow area. He's so smart in uh, creating space uh, for himself to take that shot. In. Again, not the most athletic, yep. but one of the smartest in the UAAB. Six minutes to play. It is 24 22. JV Kasho puts it in. Speaking about creating space for his jumper, JV Kasho with his second three pointer. Two out of two. From beyond area code for JV, Ryan Buenafe puts it back to Nonoy. And they're trying to take a charge of Baclau. Yes, offensive oh. foul on Nonoy Baclau. And that would be the second foul here on Baclau. Remember, Mark, when we were doing the Nike Summer League, and I was saying, I was saying that in college basketball, there's so many ticky tacky fouls, fouls by hand slap. And I don't see a lot of players really taking the charge, and I love seeing something like that. As we go into this uh, Samsung timeout, Sam with Samsung, imagination lives. We'll be back. We're back here at the Araneta Coliseum, and we talked about this matchup, Mark. The nice thing with this matchup is they will be playing each other most of the, the, probably the whole game here against each other, guarding against each other, Meyerhofer and Baklau. <laughs> Look at the numbers of Meyerhofer, 11.4, 8.9. Baklau, excellent rookie season, 6.1 and 5.9. He did not start uh, that well last year, but in the second round, he truly emerged as a special player for Ateneo. Ambassador Christy Kenny with us as usual the, during the Ateneo LaSalle games or even the championships. Big fan of the UAP. Also guested in uh, our radio station. So game for everything. As we see Rico Meyer offer, how did he put that in? So you can get a USB to any time you want. 
it was him and uh, her and uh, Chris Chu the next day who rested up. Well, with us, 5.17 to play, 27-24, DLSU now in the lead. JV Kasha called for a second personal foul. Look at that. Up and under move on our Smart Instant Replay brought to you by Smart. Rico Meyer Hawker, seven points in the game. Kasho, two fouls, eight points, three out of three from the field, two triple shots for JV Kasho. On the line is Chris Chu, also with eight points, two out of five from the field as we see another rookie step in for De La Salle. Josh Romeb, of course, uh, played for the De La Salle Zubel team, won a couple of championships there with La Salle Zubel. Jai Reyes. Screens also won a championship for the New Eagles. As Chris Chu, five out of six from the line to stay within whispering distance of the De La Salle Green Archers. Atkins throws up the three, rattles out. The tap going to Baldos. Oh, there's a lot of kicking going on here. Rico Meyer Hopper. I only saw the second motion. I don't know. What started it? I think they're calling a foul on, this, on Julius Cueta. No, I saw. Oh. Well, I saw the referee call yes. it a sportsman-like sportsman foul like on Rico. On Rico. On Rico. Yeah, it's not clear. I think they saw the kick also. I don't. I don't know if they saw the same thing. Five minutes remaining. Let's look at that it's again. A after the three-point shot there, the air offer. I think it was on Job. So that's the, they got him on the face. Job goes down and gets him the elbow. And then the referees don't see all of this. That's the one that the referee saw. So they were jockeying for position. Rico hits Joby on the there face. Was, there was an initial, yes, right? hit from Rico Meyerhofer and then a retaliatory elbow from Job Nicomacola. And they don't see both of that. Yes. They see the third. Motion. The kick. By <laughs> the up slight, kick. Slight kick by. The mixed martial arts <laughs> move by Rico Meyer Hoffman. So, Joel Nicka McCollum now will take the free throws. Possession will also stay with them, correct? Yes. Let's go to Sharon Yu quickly from the side of DLSU. Sharon? You know, Boob, coach just thought their plays just two to three days ago, but he expects nothing less than good offensive execution. And I know it was nice seeing L.A. Revilla play with poise earlier in this big game, and I talked to him just a while ago, and he told me that his Nike Summer League experiences has helped him a lot to adjust in this kind of pressure. Now, with that said, coach is inclined into playing a game of agility on quick Yakinians, especially when they try to penetrate. Now, if our offense falls down, let's look to pose. Let's just, let's not put ourselves in a foul situation and watch out for those four turnovers. Thank you very much, Sharon. You, big mistake there on the part of, uh, of Webb. You should always give the left side here for Brian Webb. Obviously, he loves driving to his right. Webb trying to get it back. Fails in that attempt. Gets the offensive rebound, puts it back to Simon Atkins with 4.28 remaining. The hop, skip it a jump, and that's a, oh, that's a foul. Ateneo wanted a traveling infraction, but a foul will be called on Mike Bondos. That's second personal. 4.25 remaining. Ateneo in the lead. And a warning on the bench of Ateneo, who are, by the way, right in front of the La Salle side of things. But they always give the the back of the bench to Ateneo supporters. <laughs> James Manas, free throw line. 4.25 remaining, going back to Sharon support earlier. You know, that's what the Nike Summer League and the preseason tournaments are for, really getting these rookies their, their feet wet, so to speak, right, Mark? You get, you get a taste of uh, collegiate basketball before the season starts. Yes, yes. DLSU struggling from the line, Mark. Three out of 10, they got four out of 11. 13 out of 16 a man on Ateneo, so that's really giving them right, right. the lead right now. When Afe goes to his left this time, drops it off. Job with a pump fake, unable to finish. And PJ Walsh pulls it down. Mangas, blows by Ateneo, but could not finish. 
Here comes Yuri Escueta, who is playing with an injury, by the way. Chris Yu thought about it. The escape dribble back to Yuri, comes closer, rattles out. Atkins for the rebound. 3.45 remaining. Back and forth basketball here at the Anadetta Coliseum. And Simon settles down the troops. Ira Pagatsing, Joshua Webb against Buena Fe. Malas inside to Pagatsing. Great coverage by Baldos. But Pagatsing finds a way to score. Nice look there from uh, Maaha spotting Pagatsing underneath. And Pagatsing with a strong finish. And that's a much bigger Baldos. Using his body to create a little space. Let's watch here on our Smart Instant Replay brought to you by Smart. Just the right English to kiss yes. off the glass. So another rookie here uh, delivering for Lazaro. This is the free throw. They continue the struggle. Just imagine if they made half of these free throws. They'd be up maybe five, six points at least. This is our sixth deadlock of the ballgame. Buena Fe from beyond area code. And Joshua really coaxed him, taunted him to take that three in. That's what happens. And he knew it. And that is, uh, that is also something that Ryan Buena Fe does not really have yet yes. so a consistent outside shot. Although he can hit that shot when he's open. As our candidate, the top candidate of our champ of the game, Big Burger, goodness like no other. Chris Chu so far leading the parade with 10 points. And another foul call. Oh, this time. Oh, so now it's an ego game between the two rookies. And and these two guys have played each other before. Exactly. Smart instant replay brought to you by Smart. Oh, that's a great defensive stance there by Ryan Buenafe. Substitute Erica Flores, Joanna Lim from the Ateneo side of things. And actually, one from UP, one from UP. Side, huh? one from UP. Yes, Ateneo and UP. Of course, UP winning their first game uh, today. Its first appearance in its in the year that they host. The UAAP, congratulations to the Fighting Maroons and the new coaching staff led by Apoe Castro. Malahas sends that baby home and breaks the deadlock. 33-30. And the laps there at the part of Mateneo. That was way too easy. Wide open. open shot there from Malahas. And uh, another look is in the game now. Uh, Vincent Burke. Vincent Burke. He made the first long. Uh, that's right. In Faith Faith. Academy. Yes. Went up here. Goes to his left, sets up Vincent Burke from 18, knocks it down just in the nick of time. Wow. These rookies have cold water running through their veins today. From one rookie to another, <laughs> and they are playing uh, some zone here. Uh, and you, you can definitely play zone against this Lasal Beach when JV Castro is sitting down. Under two minutes to play. Another foul here, that will send the uh, 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 to the line. Ateneo's only made one triple, and that was the one courtesy of Chris Chu. This one, fourth triple for De La Salle out of seven attempts at an Accenture three-point shot, high performance delivered. The crowd settles down. One of the few moments that you will hear Good almost nothing here in the Araneta Coliseum. But we are back to the rafters, as they say. From upstairs, even on the floor, every single nook and cranny of this big dome, as you can see on your screens, occupied even on the floor. If we weren't doing this game, me and Mark would probably be <laughs> joining that crowd. That's right. Anything to watch a game like this. We have the best seats in the house right now. Oh, yes. <laughs> Nas is three out of four for the line. Good enough for a three-point lead for the defending champions. 35-32. Maui Villanueva back in the fray for De La Salle. He started for Coach Franz Kumaran. By the way, Mark, it has an 8-1 record on opening day. And uh, the only loss yep. he's had was against Ateneo in 2004. That was a year. Was that not, not yet Norman Black? I think no, that, no. Was a, that, that was Sandy at the spot. Yes, that was oh, the yeah, year that Norman, I think, came in as, as a Sultan. Sultan. Two personal fouls for P.J. Walsh. I'm talking about De La Salle Green Archers. And uh, earlier, the success rate of Coach Franz Pomarin 
Five titles in nine years, eight finals appearances, 76% of his games he has won. What a record. And only 39 losses. Exactly. And for Coach Norman Black, and they have not missed the Final Four well, as a team, as a school, in the last nine years and has averaged 10 victories in the elimination round during that period, second only to DLSU's 10.5 average. The only blemish in that statement that I made is it's only one title yes. in the five Final Four appearances. In all of those Final Four appearances. So it's, it's about getting over that run. They were there in 2006. They won the first game of the finals. I'm heavily favored to beat USD. But the Growling Tigers, led by Jervy Cruz. Jervy Cruz on the court, didn't about it. Jojo Jojo Silva still there. And Alan Evangelista. Those were the players that killed Ateneo in that year. Nice block by Vince Burke. And another foul call. A lot of fouls being called here. Jason Webb showing some tenacity under the boards. Second person on Job, Nico McCollum. Free throw update as Nico Salva marches onto the floor. DLSU is 5 of 13 from the free throw line. Ateneo doing so well today at 14 out of 18. Another miss here for the South. 5 out of 14. So that 39% will actually drop. Senator Nick Gordon. Always a picture moving out the game. And a rare time that you won't that you'd see him sitting down <laughs> and not cheering. Of course, former member of the Blue Babble Battalion. Yes, exactly. A minute to play, a minute and some spare change here in the first half. Yuri Escueta. Trying to look at his options. They reverse the play. No, they stick with stick it back. Joel Nico McCollum. Double team on it. Ryan's nowhere to go. Up and under move is blocked by Joshua Webb. Atkins goes behind the back. Sets up Joshua Webb. Gets the foul and the basket. And the three-point play opportunity. And LaSalle is looking to finish this quarter strong, Mark. This guy, Joshua Webb, he is not the most skilled player, but he is very athletic and he plays hard. Explosive leap here by Joshua Bear over the taller uh, player in uh, Salva. And the assist coming from Simon Atkins, a PS back assist. PS back by Asahan. Was that assistant coach Jack Santiago doing the Soldier Boy dance? <laughs> Did I just see him do the Soldier Boy dance? 40 seconds remaining in the first half. I will have to get a report on that, Mark. <laughs> that's, a, that's a clear, clear foul there on the uh, high lamp but that's seen. <laughs> Shouldn't he get a technical for that? Don't we have rules against those for the coaches? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Here's a Nike hyper player of the quarter. Just do it. The rookie on a crossover move. And the finish by Ryan Buenafe for Nike hyper play of the quarter. 32 seconds remaining. Chris Chu on the line. And has made a number of points from the free throw line. Six out of seven from that line as you look at Baco and Austin. 11 points for Chris Chu. Six of them from the free throw line. Make that seven as he gets that one to triple in. I'm still bothered by what I saw. <laughs> 25 seconds remaining. And for those of you who know what the Soldier Boy dance is, you know what I'm talking about. Simon Atkins from top of the circle gets it to go. But Deneo is bewildered here at the end of the first half. Seven seconds remaining. Yuri Escuela, Kurt Long, Chris Chu thought about it. Couple of fakes, nowhere to go. Salva puts it up and a wild finish. For Ateneo, a wild and disorganized finish for Ateneo. Despite the fact that JV Kasha only with six points here so far in this game. Thank you very much for watching us and choosing to watch us tonight on this Sunday showdown, the main event.
Ateneo versus La Salle with uh, Sharon Yu and Kame De Jesus reporting for DLSU and Ateneo respectively. And this is live and exclusive courtesy of ABS-CBN Sports. And third quarter is seconds away. A five-point lead by La Salle on a swing at the end of that second quarter. What about when you talk about pace, Mark? What kind of a pace has it been and who does it favor? Well, that La Salle normally would like to miss more. But uh, we didn't see a lot of, uh, although Atlay had 10 turnovers, most of them did not come from the La Salle press. So La Salle not yes. really pushing the pace in this game because I believe La Salle knows that uh, Atlay has a deeper bench. In today's, in today's, uh, if you compare these two teams, you also need to preserve the, the strength of uh, Vigo Meyer Hopper and J.B. Casho. On the run now are the Blue Eagles. Chris Yu going to his left, puts it up and in. And an injured player down for James Mangas after that drive. He's holding on to his elbow. Well, let's hope that it's one of those cases that he's not out of the It takes a while. He looks okay, though, uh, Mangas. He will be replaced here, though, by... Uh, by Malapo, by Malapes. Here's our Samsung fan of the game, brought to you by Samsung Imagination Lives. Christina Garcia, she's actually the muse, I believe. Yes. Of the I, and I think she's also an athlete, if I'm not mistaken, a member of the football team. There you go. I can always rely on you. The other information for everybody around here in the UAV part. Davy Kasha is back. Let's check out the lineup. We have Kasha Walsh. Villanueva, Atkins, and Mader Malabes starting off. Replacing uh, James Malahas, who went down earlier. Foul on... On Nonay Baclau. Third foul here on Baclau. There was a shove. Yes, there was a shove. Baclau is complaining and goes sharp and black also here. But uh, there was a shove by Baclau under the basket. Nonay will stay on the floor and play it out first. He's joined by Kirk Long, Chris Chiu, Raba al -Husseini. And Jai Reyes fading away. Maybe this is that one. Jai looks ahead, nobody in front of him. He sets the table. 17 on a 24 without for a minute gone by here in the third quarter. There's two. Thought about it once again. Eight on their 24. Splits the double team. Pulls up, dishes it off to Donoy with two seconds remaining. Foul by the rookie in the ground. And you know, we, we saw a lot of rookies play in that uh, first half, but this second half, expect these two coaches to rely now more on the veterans. As you look at the Taneo, they have more, they have veterans like Jai Reyes, Kishu, and Kurt Longlaw in the game. Three throws to be given to uh, Donoy Baklao. Wow, of course, on, uh, and now a co-captain. We'll get an update on James Monaz later on. Sharon, you and Andy. I mentioned Lonoy Baklao now, co-captain for the Ateneo Blue Eagles from the Bata National High School in Bacolod City. He's co-captains with Yuri Escueta this year for the Blue Eagles. Chris Chu being the captain. 10 on the 24, Malapes finds Casho, who can finish with either right or left, and that's what makes him a major player for De La Salle. Such a smooth player. I have a feeling season 71 will be another special season here for Jamie Casho. Teneo's turn to answer, they go back down to Raba Alusaini, who hasn't tasted that ball in a while. Doesn't get that to trickle in, and a foul is called on Atkins. Good defense that time on the part of Walshaw bodying up on oh, Al Hussein as he made that turn for that hook shot. Second personal on Simon, which Northern Black. I think to go back to the finals, something he has tasted here in the year 2006, eliminated by this same team on the fifth matchup in season 70. AP. Two minutes gone by here in the third quarter. 42-39 is the score. Let's go to Sharon Yu for this quick report from LaSalle. Sharon. Move 
15 points contributed by the rookies during the first quarter. However, it's not just the points that the coaches appreciated, but also their defense. They're staying within the system, good composure, and they execute the roles given to them very effectively. The rookies were told to sustain the intensity because the coaches noticed that their energy is contagious for the rest of the team. With a good hit assist during the first half, coach continuously wants them to better their ball movement. Now about James's ball earlier, nothing to worry about. He'll be back in a bit, Boom. Thank you very much, Aaron Yu. And yes, making the point about the rookies. But it is the veterans also delivering for them at this third quarter, or in this third quarter. Davy Castro with a couple of tough shots, giving them a five-point lead at 44-39. And on the other side of the offense, Ateneo Aluseni taking some jumpers here. Maybe not, not a good plan here for Rafa Aluseni. AJ Walsh called for his third personal foul. This one of the offensive variety. Rabba Alusaini is one out of four from the field. That hook shot that we talked about earlier in the first quarter. That was the only field goal for Rabba Alusaini. When you sit maybe 10 minutes late in the second quarter, maybe even more, I think that was two personal fouls in the early in the game. That takes away from your rhythm. And that is lost by power for, for Rabba Alusaini. Approaching the seven minute mark of this third quarter. And Ateneo down by five. The biggest lead for La Salle is just that. While it for Ateneo is six. That has been a while. Going back to Rabba. Forces this one. And he will go to the line for free throws. And Ferdinand, not as, uh, not as big and as experienced as P.J. Walsh. Rafa one out of four from the line, as I mentioned earlier. Had that uh, awesome game in the uh, finals of the Nike Summer League. Rico Meyer Hoffer has uh, already been accustomed to playing off the bench even last year, partly because of his propensity to get into foul yes. trouble early in the ballgame. He's excelled in that, uh, in that goal, uh, I think, in my home. That's what I mean, as a coach, always likes to have some uh, firepower off the bench. Remember uh, the time when Joseph Pio also uh, came off the bench for the South. Yes. Exactly. Which at first he was not accustomed to. Yes. He was struggling off the bench, but eventually starred in that role. Nine on the 24 for Ateneo. They are behind by only a basket. As Chris Chu goes to the bank on a Sunday and deposits a twinner. Six minute mark of this third quarter, and it is down to another one point lead for the defending champions. Revilla, crossover, oh, off balance jumper goes haywire. Chris Chu running the break here. Looking left, looking right, shooting, and it's fouled. And we'll go to the line where he has harvested a lot of points, Mark. And Chris Chu sold that ball. Great job by Chris Chu to, to get that foul from uh, La Salle. Fourth personal foul for Ferdinand as we segue into this timeout being brought to us by Samson. Imagination lives. You are watching the UAP exclusively courtesy of ABS-CBN Sports. At the Araneta Coliseum. We're joined by Mr. Beaver Lopez here, also at the Big Dome. 17 points for Chris Chu, 8 out of 9, make that 9 out of 10 from the line. 18 points. Ateneo has made a living here from the free throw line. One point lead now to Ateneo. 5.40 to play. DLSU as a team is 6 out of 16 from the line. And Chris Chu, 9 out of 10. Chris Chu also 50% from the field. Ateneo again on the run. Beauty trying to control the spheroid. Puts it up, and Rico Meyer Hopper was there to bother him. L.A. looking to attack. Kasha thought about it. Gives it up to L.A., fades away for this one. Nothing there, and it will be... La 
Nassau ball. Nassau ball. Last touch on uh, Baba Luzini. Let's go to Kami De Jesus for this report from Ateneo. The game may be tied and the crowd boring, but the Ateneo Blue Eagles remain undaunted in all more focus as Coach Norman Black asks his boys to effectively execute their plays. Coach Norman Black also wants his boys to challenge the Green Archers to a strong and aggressive defense. As Coach Mike said, walang talo sa defense. At this point, knowledge in basketball is not enough as the Blue Eagles were asked to read and anticipate the opponent's plays. No fancy plays and no individual plays for the Blue Eagles because this quarter is time about, it's all about team effort. More updates later, Boom. Thank you very much, Cami. And so far, it has been working, all of these defensive adjustments. One point lead now for Ateneo. They have not tasted this for a while. Kirk Long entering the fray for the Blue Eagles with under five minutes to play. In the meantime, we are Jolly Crispy Fries and Best Friend Fries. That's Raymark, Ellie, Lawrence, Alexandra from the UP Pep Squad. Have your pictures taken at the Jollibee Barcada booth and get a chance to win cool gadgets. Teneo, courtesy of Nekka McCollum, could not find the rack. They still have the one point lead. Oh, what a tackle! Hard Joe being there could by not... Joe Kutko Mahala, but he could, not, he could not control his momentum. Joe could not control his momentum, correct? And he is... Is he... Oh, Joe Kutko Mahala called for that foul. Caught on our Smart Instant Replay, brought to you by Smart. And an awkward landing. Loud thud. We're at the end of that to call us here. Twenty-nine remaining. Short by Bader Malapes, who has not found the stroke here in this game. Body sprawling on the floor. Meyerhofer and Kasho picking themselves up with 16 on the 24. Nice show by Raba. Excellent pass by J.V. Kasho. J.V. Kasho was able to lead that uh, clap uh, oh, of that pick and roll play by the south. He's had that feeling that J.V.'s just waiting for the fourth quarter. And he wouldn't be surprised anymore. Joe Nakamakala called for his fourth personal, and that will force the hand of Coach Norman Black to send in Mike Maldos. Also coming back is PJ Barua for De La Salle. James Mangahas. Seven out of seven from the free throw line. He's the only one doing well in that area. Continues to stroke it in. Chairman Gabby Lopez and Mr. Anton Montinola, of course. FEU Tamaraos, when's your next game, Mark? For FEU. Saturday against this La Salle team. Ateneo, I believe, will play Adams, Adams on Thursday. Adams on Thursday, correct. We'll give you the schedule later on towards the end of this game for our Thursday showcase. In the meantime, the business at hand is DLSU. Seven lead changes already in this game. 46-45 for the defending champions. 10 on the 24. Valdos, nowhere to go. Six, five. Valdos has to put this one up. Kirk Long from the corner. Nothing. LaSalle now, their turn to produce something here as J.B. Casho in the thick of that defense. Twisting himself like a pretzel to draw the foul. Sudden burst of speed here from J.B. Casso. Amazing. And just like Chris Chu, no longer just an outside shooter here in this league. And I love the fact that J.B. Casho, not only the sudden burst of the, the, the sudden acceleration, but the change of direction yes. in such a short uh, span of time. And again, the ability to finish left and right, the ability to dribble left and right, makes it more effective and so harder to guard. One of the nicest guys you'll ever talk to. Oh, that's right. That's right. On and off the court. On and off the court, correct. Ryan Winafea. No action so far in the second half for Ateneo Splice Luki. 338 remaining. A rare miss by Castro from the free throw line. Now he has 11 points. 
30 remaining. Yuri Escueta in the frame for Ateneo. Chris Ju, baseline drive. Time check foul. Yep. Against Hailam Bagatsing. Sticking to him like glue. I also remember when Chris Yu was a rookie and a sophomore for Ateneo. He was so skinny. Back in the day, in the meantime, Jack and Jill moment. Life is fun with Jack and Jill, and life is always fun in the UAAP. As we mentioned, 90% from the line today for this man. And no, I don't jinx him. That's the important thing. Very hard to jinx, Chris. <laughs> We've said that so many times. You for the best. You know, the only players in Ateneo with more than one field goal made is this guy, Ryan Buenafer. Two Outside out of four. Outside Two out of four. And Chris Chu. Four out of nine. So these are the only two players who have multiple field goals. That's a cause for concern. Exactly. Oh, nice fake. Talking about selling a fake. Nico Meyer off And you would go for it because Rico has developed that piece. Not if you're Mike Walker. You'd rather, rather um, uh, Rico take that uh, long jumper. Until he starts uh, shooting yes, yes. two or three. Fourth person will follow in Mike Baldos. Chris Drew will get a bunch of reserve break. Applause from the Antonio side of things. Who, by the way, will do the guy on the line right now. Nico Meyer off of him. The guy just simply doesn't care. That's one of the things that, you know, the players here in the UAP really get used to. And there are players who love that moment. Yes. With their group, group that are hosting yeah. around. So they hosting yeah. tight. Nico Meyer off is definitely one of them. They welcome it. Guys like Mac Maca Corner. <laughs> Wesley Gonzalez back in the day. You go ahead. The ability to zone out the crowd. Something that you learned early here in your college career. Meyerhofer playing the passing lanes. Just ran out of space. Uh, this guy could be, could be a good goalkeeper. Uh, yep, with those long limbs and long arms. That brings back 49-47. Let's uh, give you a Samsung timeout. Imagination there. We'll be back. back with you straight from the Araneta Coliseum for Ateneo versus Rosal, the main event for your Sunday showdown, 49-47 at under three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Brian Buenafe attacking and then setting up Vince Burke who is two out of two that's on the field. That's the second time a Buenafe has spotted uh, Vince Burke for three. That's a nice trip job by Eric Salama, three on one, great passing. Oh. Raba Alusseni to create. Here's that nice move and then nice pass here to Pittsburgh. He has back assist. He has back on the side. We can see a lot of it. Yes, we can see a lot of it. And that's because number one, he's playing the back of uh, shooting guard uh, to play shoot. Last year, they played a lot together but with the presence of Buena Fe. The minutes will uh, down now here for Salam. Both moments. Set up Nico. Coach Norman Black looking for some motion in the offense. But that's it with me. Offensive rebound. PJ puts it back in. 51 49. Coming up the two minute mark of this third quarter. Eric Salaman against Simon Atkins. Raba asking for it, doesn't get the possession. Jai using the roadblock. Winnipeg, up and under move, makes the adjustment, gets it to crawl in. And that's a proper body strike yes. a rookie. That was not a rookie move by Winnipeg. <laughs> Three out of five from the field for Ryan Winnipeg. And we are tied for the ninth time of this ball game. Nine deadlocks. Lead changes and a foul ball again. Oh, 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 yes, 
Jaileas, and that will send Simon Atkins to the line. Here's another poke ball that Coach Ansarab Eaton. Coach Norman Black. One point to eight remaining in the third quarter. Simon unable to break that tie. There's two on the screens. Very optimistic about this season's team. Seventy first season. Very good at the list here for the South of missing a lot of free throws. And right now, talking about misses here in the third quarter, they are five out of ten. While Ateneo is eight out of eight here in the third quarter. Right up there again. Puts it in. Just a prime time. Whoa! Big time for the fifth. Oh, answers with a big three pointer. He gets the lead once again. Eight lead change in the ballgame. 54 53. Palua can keep it stepping with a fifth. Palas are not going to lose the trend, but the strength yeah. with a fifth. Too much here for PG Palua. Excellent point. Salamat this time. Cross the foul from Hiram. That will hold play. 37.6 seconds remaining. Here's our Nike hyper play of the quarter. Just do it. JV Gasho. Poetry in motion for the veteran. And the left handed finish. Eric Salama. Two out of two from the line. They got three out of three. DJ Walsh from on your screens. Waiting for his turn. Another deadlock game. Eric keeps it that way. That is the 10th deadlock of the ballgame. 54 all. Barua has that stroke. This is Nash trying to get the rebound, but it will be blue ball. 27.9 seconds remaining in the third. And they send in Joshua Webb. Joshua Webb for Hiram. A lot of energy from the bench. Let's look at that move, Mark. What a move. Great hang time and even a superior upper body strength here on the bottom face. PS Bank power move. Brought to you by PS Bank. Aha, Sasha. 22 seconds in the red zone. 3 seconds between the game clock and the shot clock. And it is Eric Salama. He's going to try to create. Eric goes all the way. Delivered. The good news, Ateneo's in the lead for all the Ateneo fans. The bad news, there's 10 more minutes in this ball game, and those 10 more minutes will be coming at you after these. Back here at the Ateneo Coliseum. And just like the start of this game, prior to the ball being already in play, a technical foul is called on Coach Norman Black for disobeying the commissioner's orders. That's what we heard from the policy of That Barker was announced saying. by the Parker, but uh, let's clarify what the, exactly what that is. So, Tasho will get uh, a chance here to tie the game. And he does. And LaSalle should keep ball possession. Exactly. In, so instead of Mateneo, Starting the quarter with their with possession in a two-point lead. Because of the technical foul, they LaSalle get the two free throws. LaSalle now gets the ball. And it's a tight game. It's a tight game at 56 all. What a development here. So we start on even keel. Both Ateneo and Lasar. So welcome to the fourth quarter, folks. For Ateneo versus Lasal, Boom Gonzalez, Mark Molina for ABS CBN Sports. Joshua Webb now gives them the lead. That is the 11th lead change of the ballgame. And just like that, Mark the complexion. 
the start of the quarter is totally different. That totally killed the momentum of Ateneo. Exactly. Jai trying to get it back. Nothing there. JV on the run. Two Blue Eagles following him. No goal. No problem for JV Castro. JV Castro running at full speed. The big 6 to nothing run here for La Salle. Joshua Webb is in the game here to defend against Lion Buenafem. And he's trying, trying to get into his head. He may not be able to match up physically, Mark, but he's getting into Ryan's head. Vince will try again, this time now. And a foul called on Joshua Webb. A minute and two seconds gone by. And a two-point deficit has turned into a four-point lead as J.V. Castro races to the rack on a Petron fast break. Petron extra unleaded, extra mile play. And Atkins will move out for the rookie, L.A. Revilla. Chris Chu on your screens. Together with Ryan Buenafe, they are 8 out of 15 from the field. The rest of the team, though, is 7 out of 24. Chris Chu, Ronin Baclao, Raba Al Husseini, and Eric Salaman. We have seen uh, a couple of technical foul calls at the start of the game and at the start of the third quarter that a lot of people have not been able to understand yet. That's right. Comprehend. Well, it's a good thing. It's one on each side, so it negates things. Meyerhofer from 16 gets the roll. Meyerhofer is four out of 14 from the field. Would you believe? But he will keep on shooting. Yep. Uh, Especially here in the fourth quarter. Let's go to Sharon Yu for DLSU. Sharon. We're making them come back. We're giving them the rhythm. We're giving them the confidence. Those were the words from Coach Franz as he continues to tell the archers to keep the Ateneans preoccupied with their defense by putting pressure on the ball because every time can soon matter. Now seven fouls for the archers and ten free throw points for both teams during the third quarter. Coach was saying right from the get-go, ayaw, ayaw po maging free throw competition ito dahil ilalagay natin ang sarili natin sa situation na matatawagan tayo ng foul. Ayaw ko yun. Actually, boom, the last huddle was quite short. Not much adjustments as the boys shouted with life. Game on! Well, just as Sharon was reporting on that, unfortunately for them, they commit a foul and a three-point play opportunity given to Lone Baclao here at the 8 or 7 mark of the fourth quarter as we look at our Smart Instant Replay brought to you by Smart. He is two out of two from the line. Last two plays were excellent for Coach Norman Black. They went inside because Baclau and Alusaini definitely stronger and bigger against this LaSalle front line of Meyerhofer and Mangahas. Three out of three from the line. Now, it is down to a one-point lead for DLSU. Webb trapped. Able to get out of jail, and he is able to put it in. I you just know, love the heart of this kid. You know, Coach Brad Spumana, and I was talking to him prior to the season starting, and he tells me about Joshua Webb. He's one of those guys that he constantly gets furious with because of too much energy sometimes. But also, that was the line of a chance of effort. And look at that, that was all effort for what they call Joshua's spider web on our Smart Instant Replay brought to you by Smart. And that's what you need. He attacked the defense that time of Chris Chu. This guy showing a lot of energy in this game. And again, free throws. Free throws are again a problem for LaSalle. Web misses that one. Is that Chris Chu down? Yes, it is. Chris Chu. Somebody planted an elbow on his face, apparently. All part and parcel of the Ateneo La Salle saga. Well, actually, all part and parcel of the UAP now. Especially this season, where all games, if not most of them, will be very, very competitive. Bernie Oka, presenting the La Salle, the UAP part, but now will move out. Joel Nekamakalam steps back in. 7.51 to play. 64-61, another classic 
in the making. Webb hounding Salamat. Salamat loses it to L.A. Vigilia. L.A. goes behind the back, puts it up, and it's blocked by Yuri Escueta. Excellent defense right there on both ends of the floor. First by Joshua Webb against Salamat, and then uh, Yuri Escueta with a nice block. Perfectly timed block courtesy of C2 Cool and Lee Block. Cool was clean. And you can't do that shake the finger move here in the UAAP. That's uh, going to be warned as taunting. That Paul Lee got a couple of technical fouls yesterday for exactly. flash talking. He was ejected because of that. Mangas, top of the circle, gets it to go! This is the reverse mismatch happening on the other side of the fence. Mangas has the advantage in the perimeter against Joe Nicomacola. 67-61. Back. The biggest lead of LaSalle right now, Mark, at a dangerous point of the game. Joel puts it off the glass. That's Got the way. it down to four. That's the way to answer if you're Joe Nicobacola. Take it inside against the against the defense of Mangas, who cannot play Joe uh, in the low post. Ateneo, by the way, with five blocks in this game. And speaking of the school, let's go to their courtside reporter, Kami Desus. As the pressure mounts here in the ball game, the Blue Eagles were asked to build up on their offense. This is no time for them to miss shots as scoring is very critical for the Blue Eagles. Also, the Blue Eagles will not be relaxing in their defense anytime soon. Coach Norman reminded the point guards to set the place in the court and pull the team together. There is not much time for them to commit mistakes. Thus, Coach Norman wants his boys to show the fighting and the winning spirit the Ateneo is known for. Boom. Five personal fouls on Job Nakamakala. Thank you, Kameh Jesus. And a short stint for Job. He will go to the bench and hit the showers early. And there's a foul. We'll step right back in. And welcome back to Job Nakamakala here in the UAAP. Quality minutes today, yeah, for, yes. jo for Job uh, Nicomacola. Good uh, omen, good uh, sign of things to come for him personally, individually. His conditioning has always been a question. Casio again, zigzagging, nothing there. Escueta taking the pass from Raba. Escueta, Raba goes to his right, back to Chris Chu, thought about it. They'll repost to Raba Aluseni, turns to his right, that's his strong spot. Excellent patience on the part of Chris Chu. Yes. Not rushing things, giving it back to the low post to Lapa Alusaini. 67 65, 623 remaining. You are watching this live and exclusive on ABS CBN Sports, courtesy of ABS CBN Sports on Studio 23. Let's see if LaSalle tries to do something here. As we look at this jump hook by Alusaini with the change from us. Our Smart Instant Replay brought to you by Smart. Webb trying to go for his own version of a hook. Rattles out. Eric goes back to his right. Eric speeds up and he puts it in. What a hesitation move by the former San Sebastian Stag. Meyer Hopper short number three. But Brown comes away with a score three bound. Eric Salamat again. All the way. Yes! What a play by Eric Salamat back to back. Penetrations by Salamat gives Ateneo back the lead one again. 69 67. And another lead change. That is the 12th lead change of the ball game. And the ball will go to Ateneo. This time, the momentum shifting to the blue side of things. How many momentum shifts have we seen in this game? That has been a storyline for this matchup. And look at that hesitation move, the crossover by Eric Salaman to put it in to tie the ball game. And then over Rico Meyer Hoffer to give them the lead at 69, 67. Back to live action. They go down the basement once again. Raba Alusseni, double team on him. Escueta thought about it. Again the repost, again the hook shot. They are milking that play. Excellent again. Excellent execution by Ateneo. Third hook shot 
for Rabba Al Husseini. Ten points, four rebounds, and the blue side of things celebrating this four point lead as we go into a Samson timeout. Imagination lives. We'll be back. Back to live action here at the Araneta Coliseum, and what you just saw. JV Castro breaking the 10 0 run. It was 67 61 earlier, and then a 10 0 run dropped by Ateneo to make it 71 67, and then now 71 69 after JV Castro. Coach Chris Pass. 2. Coach Pasmanic making the adjustment here, putting in PJ Walsham, who defended well against Al Hussein in the third quarter. Pass. Oh, what an escape job! This is the 11th, oh, sorry, 13th deadlock of the ball game at 71 all. Rabba Alusseini, Mark has made his last three shots after he muffed that under goal stab earlier. They go back to Rabba. Another one. This one is short. And now Lasalle hoping to retake the lead in this nice pass. What the a block. Wow. Oh, what a block. Oh, no, Baklao. What a rejection by Baklao. That was a great pass by J.V. Castro. But if you're P.J. Walsh, you gotta go stronger than that. Especially when you have Baklao lurking. Al Husseini, strong move. Doesn't get the roll. Oh, and it is a Tineo ball. Smart play by Raba Al Husseini. We have got to look at that block once again. But first, a B.S. Bank assist to Rico Meyerhofer. Look at him twirl to the, uh, to the basket to tie the ball game at 71. That was our PS Bank assist. We'll take a look at that block later. 3.34 to play. And then they'll possession. 13th deadlock. Eric Salama looking to break it. Via the three. That's short. Well, Snorton Black didn't like the shot, Mark. Yes, yeah, not a good shot. An offensive foul. foul. Salama redeeming himself. Let's see if Ateneo will have something here for Chris Chu. Lasal is expecting already that play against Lapa Lusani. I would expect Coach Carol Black to draw something up here for Chris Chu. Well, let's see after the Samson timeout. Samson, imagination lives. Final 319 when we come back. Welcome back to the Big Dome. Final 319 of this uh, matchup to complete and to cap off an amazing opening weekend for the UAP 71st season, live and exclusive, courtesy of ABS-CBN Sports. Approaching the three-minute mark, 10 under 24 for Ateneo. Six seconds. Chris, the escape dribble, draws the foul. And this is what you were talking about, Mark. And that was just a smart play here by Chris Chu. Drawing that foul against Jamie Casio. And you, you have to respect that jumper of Chris Chu, and that's why the bump fake was very effective that time. It was a Nike hyper play on the corner. Just do it. JV Casio off to the races. Puts it up and in. Chris Chu on the line once again, where he is 11 out of 12. 20 points. Four rebounds and 11 out of 12 shooting from the 15 foot line. Under two, three minutes remaining. Mr. Robert Arevalo joining us here at the Araneta Coliseum. Five matchups, five games last year, and this was practically the same feeling that I got. And I'm sure everybody here at the Araneta Coliseum, where we can barely sit down, Mark. This is what they call edge of the seat action. Something we expected from these two title contenders, the defending champs, and the pretenders to the crowd. Another Baklao coming away with his fourth rebound of the game. Not really the shot you want to take here yep. if you're LaSalle. PJ Walsh fading away. Raba in the meantime asking for it against PJ. Double team on him. He puts it up. He's blocked. And a ball taken away by James Palaz. Loses it to Yuri Estrella. Oh, there's a foul. On James Mangahas. Uh, offensive foul, yes. Offensive foul, we'll be for James Mangahas. James Mangahas should know better next time. Dribbling in front of the quick Yuri Estrella. Powerade, power rebound. Powerade sports is what you make. Play Bacal. Bacolod. 
An offense defense substitution here for Coach Norman Black using Jai Reyes on the offensive oh, end. Yuri Escueta on the defensive end. People behind me all standing up already, Mark, here at this section of the Araneta Coliseum. Doing the UAP for close to seven years, and it still gives me goosebumps just looking up the oh, crowd yes. all the way up. For those of you who have the benefit of television right now, watching us live on Studio 23 and the replay on Sky Cable Channel 33, thank you very much. Chris, you unable though to put it down in that sequence. He breaks up this play. What was he looking for? Was he looking for a foul? 2.07 remaining. 21 seconds remaining on the shot clock of the LSU. Who are trailing by two. And if you're at an area, you keep an eye on number six here right now. He's going to be the most dangerous guy here for La Salle. The veterans, J.B. Casho and Rico Meyerhoff are the ones who are used to this Kind of situ kinds of situation. Kasha loses the ball momentarily. And then given space to shoot. Rebound by the Urias with the two-minute mark. That was too early in the shot clock. Last two minutes brought to you by PS Banks. 15 on the 24 for Antonio. They go to Eric Salamat. Salamat gets the step of JB. Blocked but fouled by Lasalia. All on JV Casio. Fourth personal. Four on JV and uh, but more importantly for Ateneo, Salamat will go to the line for two more. And this has been the advantage of Ateneo all throughout this game. Free flow shooting. Let's see if uh, they will continue their high clip from the line. Three out of four from the line for Eric Salamat. Nine points for him. Now ten. Because of that conversion, it was four out of five. Oh, sorry, it didn't didn't go in, right? Yes, he missed, okay, he missed, so he missed three it. out of five. He's now. still three out of five. He's, I mean, the lead is still two, and it is three out of five. Nine points still. Now it's ten. And a one possession lead. Well, we'll check in for Malabes. And in a game like this, Mark, you've got to look at the free throws how De La Salle is losing this contest with a three-point deficit. They have missed 16 free throws to the six of Ateneo. And that is a key stand right there if they will go on to lose this one. Foul is committed by Yuri Escuela. That was sent J.P. Lasso to the line. Uh, uh, only three, not, not, three not yet over the limit. Not yet over the limit. That foul yes. sends them over the limit, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Baby Kashinov. Using the roadblock. Puts up the three. That's short on Estrella on his knees. Gets his fifth rebound of the ball game. And a Two chance. Forced please here for JV Casio. A chance to extend. Raba playing the high post. Chris Yu being denied. Raba puts it up. That's way, way off his range. JB looking ahead. Gets it to Meyer Hopper. Streaking through. And he puts it in. Gliding move by Meyer Hopper. Town to one point. Here eight, we go again. 18 points. Eight rebounds by Rico Meyer Hopper. And here we go for the final 50 seconds of this game. And everybody and his mother standing up here at the Araneta Coliseum. As Ateneo is trying to protect the one point lead. But I see doing a good job denying this shoe. But he gets away. Oh. He gets away. Wow. Oh. And he will take two free throws. I don't think it was a, it was a, 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 a dirty foul on the part of Bagatzi. I don't think so either. I think it was momentum that, yes. that carried him. And also there was a slight uh, kick on the part of Chris Shu and that uh, caught the Highland Bagat Singh. 38 seconds remaining. 
the face, pretty much, of Ateneo Blue Eagles, the captain. And if there's somebody who, who, would, who, who Ateneo would want to go to the line at this stage of the game, it's Chris Chu. Here's that last play, Chris Chu, three for a jumper. But let's see. Yep, caught the, the leg. Caught him in the leg. Nothing intentional. There's a foul. Three free throws for Chris Chu. And that was while taking a three pointer. So three foul shots here for Chris Chu. 13 out of 14, Mark, from the line. This guy has been automatic all game long. 14 out of 15. And he has killed LaSalle a couple of times in season 70 via the three-point shot. This time, he's doing it via the free throw line, but he misses that one. That is only his second miss of the ball game. And that was a big miss because that two, that, uh, two more free throws yes. would have extended this into a two-possession two game. Prayers are being said. By the Ateneo faithful, so Chris Chu makes two out of three on that trip. And good for a three-point lead. One possession lead as we go into the Samson timeout. Imagination lives. Back here at the Ateneo Coliseum, the defending champions down by three, but definitely not out. We've seen them pull off victories. Bigger leads, bigger deficits rather. 30 seconds, 14 on the shot clock. They go to JV, double team on JV. Back to PJ for three, go! And it goes to Yuri, and it's fouled by Rico Meyerhofer. Excellent defense by the Ateneo Blue Eagles, forcing the ball out of the hands of JV Casio. 20 seconds remaining and a chance to give them a possession lead. Still a lot of time. Yep. Still a lot of time here, but if Ateneo can make their free throws, they will win this ball game. And speaking of free throws, 31 out of 38 for this side, the blue side, 13 out of 29 for DLSU. And right now, it is smelling like this is what's going to make the difference. Although Escueta. Still a lot of time here. Buckley. DLSU, 6 out of 17 from the three-point area, but 1 out of 6 in the fourth quarter. Ateneo has only shot 9 times, only made 1. And this is a 2-possession lead now. They need a quick 2 or a quick 3. JB looking for a screen. He fakes. It's Yuri. What a play. He loses the ball to Yuri Escueta. And Chris Chu will try to dribble this one out. And a foul is called on PJ Barua. the reason why he is there. Yuri Escueta with two consecutive plays. What an excellent defensive job by Yuri Escueta. He won the screen against Casho, which is a really good shot. And Casho was not able to take that shot. And the next play, he slips Casho off the ball. And Chris Chu will now try to put the finishing touches on this ball game. He is shooting 15 at that 16 out of 18 from the line. Yuri Escueta what about him being the hero in one of those games last year, remember? He did it with his offense last time, and then he had that fast issue. But today, he did it with his defense. And he is playing injured, as Rico is blocked by Donne Bacrao, and that will do it! Ateneo wins over LaSalle on their opening assignment. Get this record to eight and two in terms of opening games. Still not a bad record, but the two losses against the arch rivals. But it has been the offense and free throw shooting of Chris Chu and the defense of Yuri Escuenta. And we will be back to wrap this baby up. We're back here at the Aronato Coliseum as half of the Big Dome is celebrating this uh, win by the Ateneo Blue Eagles, the uh, opening assignment for them. LaSalle hates to lose, and they hate it even more when it's against arch rivals. 
meantime, Mark, let's give everybody watching on Studio 23 our Samsung Best Player, brought to you by Samsung Imagination Lives. He was the only one who had a consistent 40 minutes for today in today's ballgame. Of course, their leader, Chris Chu, icing the game with an impeccable free throw shooting, 26 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 assists. Let me just add, 14 of those 26 points came in the second half, 10 of those 14 from the free throw line. That's how big it was. In the meantime, our essential high performance defining moment. High performance delivered. Eric Salaman over the outstretched arms of Rico Meyerhofer. That was an important swing for Atene. Yes, th this guy was key. We mentioned earlier on that Chris Chu needed help offensively yes. in this game. Right. And in that second half, Rafa Alusaini and Eric Salaman were key to uh, helping, at the, uh, helping Chris Chu out uh, on the offensive line. In the meantime, as we Listen to Lasar sing their school hymn. Let's give you our Samson winning break by Samson. Imagination lives. Very few times that uh, our defensive play is the winning break, but that was a great. <laughs> Did he use his foot? They defense with his arms and his feet. Well, you do what you can. I guess. That's what it is. But Julian uh, Squat is taking the ball away. Accidentally, I don't know, but takes it all away. Quarter, which forced Coach Flans Pumadan to change his lineup yes. and, and put in a bigger but less offensive uh, lineup with, with PJ Walsh on there because he gambled in, with Mangahas and Meyer Hofer as his bigs, but Laba Luseni made them pay in that fourth quarter with a couple of jump hooks. Excellent point, and that was brought to you by PS Back. Simple lang. And to cap it off, our champ of the game, big burger goodness like no other, of well, course. He doesn't score a lot every time, but boy, this is one of those days. He was special from the 15th parallel line, Chris Chu. It's just a great, terrific understanding of the game here for Chris Chu. And that's the reason why he got that many trips to the foul line. And that's also the reason why he's the captain of this current Ateneo de Manila Blue Eagles team.